Hey, Chris. All right. So we have novelist Chris Linear on the line. Now, of course, being um, the show being in love and in business, we always got to, you know, break down, you know, give our people a little insight on the business world. So we do have novelist. Um, entrepreneur and mental health therapist. Now, Chris, when I know when um, I found out that you were going to be on the show, I really wanted to talk about the whole uh, mental health therapist aspect of your life because that's not something that we really talk about a lot in the black community. Oh, I'll be glad to talk about that. Yeah, I'm a family therapist uh, working out in the Metro Detroit area. And basically, you know, I work with a lot of families who are dealing with a lot of issues concerning mental health, uh, substance abuse, uh, discipline problems, um, you know, just a lot of issues that, you know, a lot of families deal with. And actually, a lot of my clientele are African American, so I would say pretty much maybe 90, 95% is African American. Uh, So me being African American myself, it helps me to relate more you know, to to my clients because I know what they're going through because I went through the same things when I was a child. So, you know, none of it's, you know, foreign to me or, you know, something, it's not something that, you know, I don't know about. I, I lived it myself. So, you know, not just having the book smarts to, you know, apply it to my work, but I also have, like, real-life experience to help these families out, and I think it really helps me to understand them and uh, helps them to achieve their goals and to be successful in life. Well, that's definitely what's up. I think that's something that, you know, you definitely deserve to be put on a pedestal for, you know, what you do because we're all about, you know, preserving the structure of the black family. And sometimes we do need help. And I think the mental health, you know, aspect of it is something that maybe we should have, you know, more conversations about in the community. So um, now before we get um, more into who you are as a person, just give us a little background about yourself and what led you to where you are now. Uh, Well, like I said, my name is Christopher Laird. Uh, I was born and raised uh, in Detroit, Michigan. Um, You know, basically, you know, my passions have always been um, just helping people, uh, I've always loved to write, and you know, I have a, a very strong passion for for fishing as well. Uh, so that kind of encompasses like who I am, in like in a nutshell. Um, you know, basically, uh, I went to Wayne State University up here in Detroit. Uh, graduated with a bachelor's in um, psychology, and I'm pursuing my master's right now, and hopefully to be a psychiatrist later down the road. So we're we're that's what we're working towards right now. Um, but basically, I'm just a person who just loves to write, loves to help people, uh, loves to listen to people, too. I think a lot of times today we don't listen, you know, to what people are saying. We just listen to react um, <clears throat> a lot of the time. So um, this is just a giving person, loves to write, loves to read, and um, and just loves to learn overall. Now, I totally agree with you when you say um, – you know, sometimes when we speak to each other, we just speak to react because that's something that we tell um, couples all the time because we have a book out, you know, about um, basically rules and tips to help you maintain a healthy relationship. And that's one of the rules in the book is that, you know, speak to, I mean, listen to um, comprehend and not to necessarily react because sometimes we don't take the time out to just listen. I think that was a very valid point that you made there. Right. Yeah, thank you. All right, so let's get into um, origins, right? Yes. All right. So tell us a little bit about that and how, you know, it all came together. Uh, It's very interesting how it all came together. I actually wrote this book when I was 15 years old. I'm 36 now. And uh, I, I worked on the book for about a year and a half. And uh, that includes the original and then, the, you know, the edited version. Uh, I just always had a, um, like a passion for, you know, science fiction, you know, space and the universe. Um, I was always intrigued by that because we don't know too much about the universe. You know, there's a lot of unexplained theories and, you know, things out there that we really don't know about. And, you know, as humans, we haven't really traveled that far into space, so... You know, there's a lot of mystery out there, and, and there's a lot of things that I would like to know and I would like to explore myself. So that's what kind of drew me into science fiction, and that's what drew me into writing the book. Uh, the book Origins, um, 
you know, like I said, I wrote it when I was 15. So the version that, you know, that's out now or will be out later this year is totally different from what I wrote when I was a kid because my writing style has changed. It's improved. My, you know, outlook on life's improved and enhanced as well. So has the novel. So I've added a lot of things to it and taken a lot of things out. But basically the story encompasses around there's a war between the aliens and the humans and the alien race is called the Ramassadors. The Ramassadors are a race that are highly advanced and pretty much, you know, the humans really don't have a chance against them. They're advancing in weaponry and tactics and everything. So the humans are just trying to get by. And all the other races along with the humans, you know, all the good races of other aliens, that they're, they're just trying to get by. They're just hoping to survive because it's really just looking bleak. But the war between the humans and the aliens, like the humans really don't know why they're fighting the Ram Masadors. Uh, the military called the Delta Corps, that's the military fighting in the story. The uh, the head honchos in the Delta Corps, they're just telling the military, just fight these battles, don't worry about, you know, what they're after, just, you know, just fight because we're going to, you know, we're going to die. So the military, they're just blindly fighting this battle that they really don't know what they're fighting for. And as the story kind of goes along, you know, it kind of unravels, like, what's the real purpose of this whole war and, you know, what's going on. So ambassadors are after a particle. So the particle is a, it's, it's more like an energy field that created the universe. So this goes back to the Big Bang Theory because really, nobody really knows how the universe was created and no one really knows, you know, how it was formed. So they just say this Big Bang Theory, something just exploded and just everything just kind of happened. So that's what the Red Masters are after. They're after this particle that created the universe. And once they harness this particle, not only can they destroy the universe, but they can recreate their own universe and they can just destroy time itself. So it's a very deep, uh, it's a very deep story because it goes into, you know, God and religion, you know, and it goes into questions, is God is God real or, you know, who created God if he is real? So the particle, the particle kind of goes into what created God himself because, you know, the theme of the novel, like, you can't make something out of nothing. So God had to come from somewhere. Where did he come from? So that's what this particle is kind of about, and that's what the, the ambassadors are after. And unfortunately in the story, the ambassadors get hold of the particle first. So a lot of chaos and the crazy things ensue in the story. I don't want to give it away, but, uh, okay. but, the, humans, but the humans got to find a way to get back their own universe and get the particle away from the ambassadors because – now you have the powers of God, you know, how can you see God? There's really no way. So they got to figure out how to get back to their own universe, which doesn't even exist anymore. So that's what kind of the story kind of encompasses around. That's deep, bro. Yeah, I'm not even going to lie. That kind of sounds like, um, it sounds like real life, actually. It it does sound like, a, that is that, I mean, am I just like, you know, maybe overthinking it, but is that, you know, a part of the story is kind of like what's going on in America now, because that's what it sounds like to me. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess you can say that. Um, you know, it's it's just a struggle between uh, you know, two different types of races, and like it's really like it like the whole story just kind of unravels, like you know, toward you know, as you're reading the story, like what's the real purpose behind this war? Because you know, as the military, Michael Stratford is the, he, he's the captain of the military. He's the head captain. So he's basically taking orders from, you know, the Delta Corps, you know, head honcho. So he's, you know, kind of confused, like, okay, we'll fight these battles, but why are we doing this? Because, you know, we're, you know, we're losing, you know, we're going to die. You know, we got to think of something else, you know, either, either surrender, which, you know, they end up almost doing surrendering or, you know, think of something else to to win this war because we we just really don't know. So there, there's a lot of there's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of secrets. There's a lot of uh, hidden agendas. There's a lot of um, there's assassination attempts on the captain. Um, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of obstacles that are in the way 
to stop Michael Stratford from getting closer to the truth, because the closer he gets, the more trouble that comes his way. So him being tenacious and him being determined to find out what's really going on, and everybody's pretty much lying to him, even his own wife has, you know, had lied, you know, lied to him. Ooh, you know, she, yeah, mm-hmm. he's, yeah um, so he's really trying to find out what's going on in this war because they're losing and, you know, everybody's about to be wiped out. So he has to really dig deep to find out what's really going on and knock out all these obstacles to do so. Well, Chris, I think that's something that we should all um, take from this story is that we have to dig deep in within ourselves and, you know, fix the things that's wrong and find out the truth and seek the knowledge for ourselves. So we do appreciate you um, for being on the show. Now, where can everybody go connect with you, follow, share, purchase, all of that good stuff? Okay, thank you. Yeah, everybody can go to chrislaird.net. That's C-H-R-I-S-L-A-I-R-D. Dot net. Uh, they can go to the website. Uh, I have a, a book trailer on there. I have other interviews. I even have commercials on there too. People can check out. I uh, also have you know uh, pictures of the characters on there. Um, I have. I was actually featuring the Huffington Post. The Huffington Post did an article on me uh, a couple of weeks ago. That's so fine. that article. That article is up there that they can read. There's tons of interviews they can read and a story synopsis, so they can uh, have fun and hang on there for you know a few minutes. Uh, the book will be out uh, sometime late winter, early 2017. Um, it's almost finished now, and it's about to go into the editing phase. So, uh, ChrisLayer.net for more information. All right, well, y'all heard the man. Go follow and support this brother. And this is In Love and Business with your favorite married couple. We are the Jameses. We'll be right back, y'all.